Bill Palmer recording in uh, the Pacific Northwest. This is the first in a series of uh, demonstrations, little mini video clips on watercolor sketching outdoors. Uh, there'll be several different clips to illustrate four steps in the procedure that I use all the time uh, that works well for me. I'll be working in the Aquabee Super Deluxe Sketchbook uh, made by the B Paper Company. I have several things to say, which I will say uh, during each clip, which will cover each of the four steps. And you can also read uh, much more about this on my blog at uh, BillPalmWatercolor.com. B-I-L-L-P-O-L-M plus watercolor, all one big word, dot com. So, let's get started with step one. So here we are, step one. And when you're out on a location where you want to sketch, it's a good idea to take your time. Find a scene that attracts you, first off, and then walk around a little bit and find the best view that you can, or one that you like the most. I like to uh, sketch a scene in pencil, for starters. And this series of video clips on uh, watercolor sketching outdoors I'm taking from a sketch that I did last July at Sunset Bay in Southern Oregon. This one right here. I have duplicated my drawing, my sketch there, four times. This makes it go faster when we're uh, explaining and videotaping. <clears throat> so you don't have to sit there and wait for me to draw all the time. So this is pencil, this is pen and ink, and these are the pen and ink other drawings that I'm going to do two stages of watercolor sketching in. So here, and I'll, I'll point to this because it's easier to see on the camera and the video. I think about composition when I'm doing my pencil drawing and when I'm doing my ink drawing too as well. I like to keep things unequally spaced, like this is a different size than this and the spaces between these uh, earth formations, these cliff areas, are different. The spaces between the waves are different. The lines in the surf are different distances, and I try to make sure that none of them go right out at a corner, any of the lines in any portion. In other words, I think about my composition as I'm drawing in pencil and as I'm uh, finishing in ink. So, now on to step two. So, in uh, step two, I add pen and ink to my drawing and make sure that you, if you're going to watercolor these things, make sure it's waterproof, good waterproof ink. I use Noodler's ink, uh, also called Bulletproof ink, for my sketching. Now, why do I do pencil and then pen and ink? Pencil gives me a lot of flexibility. I can change anything I want. If I use a, one of those nice soft white erasers, I can erase anything I want on this paper without damaging it. And so I, I, it helps me to relax quite a bit when I'm uh, working in pencil up here. But I move to pen and ink next because it gives me a chance to correct anything that I don't like up here. I can move things a little bit and I can change them and when I'm done, I have a waterproof pen and ink drawing that I can watercolor over freely anytime I want. The pen and ink also has a way, uh, it's kind of psychological, but it has a way of nailing the drawing for me. It gives me a structure that I can paint over and apply my paint very freely. I can get a little adventuresome, a little playful, just uh, try new things, whatever I want to do when I get to the watercolor stage. So I like to do the pen and ink uh, when I'm out sketching. Plus later on when I want to, uh, if I want to say scan this or photograph this or just use it as a reference for a larger painting, it's easy for me to where I, uh, to see where I have my original lines because they're nice and dark and they come through and shine through the watercolor that I add. 